Good morning, YouTube friends and family. Welcome to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So I'm at it again, y'all. I am getting ready, good catch, to try and build a chicken run for my ladies. So I hope you all have enjoyed the videos this week, the garden, the naming, etc. And several of you, oops, that chair's wet. <laughs> have asked that I share everything along the journey. So I am indeed going to do that. I will try not to monopolize the channel with my girls, which I think are pretty amazing. If you hear a little cooing going on in the background, there was a line at the laying <laughs> Oh, somebody's having an egg here. Um, so here's my update. Marigold, which is the Rhode Island Red, and Fancy Ray, which is the Barred Rock are both great daily layers. Violet, who is the Shire Timid Black uh, Australorp, has not laid an egg. So she's not egg bound. She may just be nervous with her new surroundings. She's very insecure. She's very married to um, the Rhode Island Red Marigold. I'm gonna start calling them by their names, guys. They're very close and they love in the evening to sit in just the little door of the nesting box, the coop part that closes up at night, and one um, marigold hugs Violet. So I think Violet is truly shrinking Violet. I love her. I'm not willing to get rid of her because she doesn't produce eggs. Um, these chickens came from a large flock, so I don't blame um, Liz and her husband at all. And again, it could, could just be, they're having a little um, nest box war over there. It could just be that she needs to settle in. It could be she's a little younger than the others. I'm not sure, but I love her and I'm keeping her. What I have requested and I don't have an answer for is I would like Fancy Ray to have a friend. She's definitely the leader of the pack. She's definitely extremely attached to me, which I love, you know, I can't hate that. But I think she needs a chicken friend too. So I have asked to purchase an additional Bardrock because Bardrocks only bond with their same breed. So that's an update, but they're all doing well. They're happy. Uh, they like watermelon. They love asparagus. My neighbor brought me some asparagus and it had split. You know how it'll split and start to go to seed. And some of the pieces were like that. So I thought, well, maybe they would like it. Oh my word, they loved it. But interestingly enough, much like their chicken mama, they don't like kale. <laughs> they pooped on the kale. <laughs> oh yeah, and walked on it. So that didn't work out. So today, what I'm attempting to build, and I will drop a link in the description box to my Amazon affiliate site. Remember, I do receive a small compensation for qualifying purchases. Um, this is the chicken run that I'm gonna try to build. So as you see, it has a tarp over the back part. So what I plan to do, let's see if I can adjust you here. Gotta go way over. Okay, so at the I'm so bad at this pointing because it's backwards. At the end of the coop here, I'll leave a small space. And the way I look at it, the doors oppose. I may have to put up some fencing so I can direct them from one to the other because Fancy Ray has a tendency to want to make a break for it when I open the door. But then they will have a nice long run. And as you get to the back area here, even though it looks heavily wooded, there's a dead tree in the corner so in the afternoon when the sun swings around to the west it gets sunny so that will give them a place that they can be in the shade oops i just popped the phone off so we'll just hold that i'm using my phone today since i'm filming outside so several of you have asked how did you do that uh chicken coop by yourself and by the way, y'all, I have been so remiss at this. I will drop my email in the description box below. I love hearing from you. If there's something you want to share privately, if you want me to pray for you in some way, you have a prayer request, 
I am so happy to do so. It will be held in the strictest of confidence. <clears throat> and please don't email and say, I'm sorry to bother you because you're never bothering me. I love hearing from all of you. So I'll be doing that from here forward. YouTube just added a new feature where you can copy your previous so you don't have to type it out each time. And sometimes I get lazy because while I love making the videos, sometimes I get lost in all the editing, etc., etc. So thank you for your gracious compliments on the chicken coop. I am very pleased. And I had big doubts and I have even bigger doubts about this. Not that I can't build the frame, but the directions specifically say, and a lot of the reviews said it takes two people to stretch the wire, wire it down, cable tie it down. So I'm just gonna do the best I can do and get as far as I can. And if I need help, I'll, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. So let me get hooked back up here so I can show you what exactly I do, because several of you were like, how do you do that by yourself? Let me show you how I do it. And it might be the girl way, or it might be too simplistic, but I'll just briefly go over what I do first when I get ready to build something. Stay so tuned. This, what I'm calling a chicken run is called an LKF. Don't know what that stands for. And it's by Polar Aurora. And they very specifically say, um, you know, if you have any questions, we will serve wholeheartedly for you. I have a feeling, well, okay guys, it's made in China. I'm just gonna tell you. But it does come in two packages. They say they won't come together. They did come FedEx for me. Pardon me guys, I got the hiccups at the same time. But I thought this was a nice touch. And then, <laughs> okay guys, you're gonna laugh. This is for a chicken coop, C-H-I-K-E-N coop. And it gives you two content sheets. One was for the small box, one was for the big box. This box weighed 106 pounds, this probably weighed 20, 30, very easy to lift. And this instruction manual, which is one of these kind. They have no words. <laughs> And it's pretty self-explanatory to get up to this part. And it looks like um, there's metal shears here. So I don't think I have any of those, but it says need two people at least when you assemble to avoid the damage of steel tube. But um, yeah, I'm gonna take that as a suggestion. So the first thing I did was I took the heavy 106 pound box and to get over here to the grass which it needs cut every time I do a video. And I just laid them out in order. So like ones, twos, threes, etc., etc. And I have my ladder. I check it against how many it says. I never start building until I'm sure all the pieces are there because if you get halfway into it and you're missing pieces or you decide you have to return it, better to know that right up front before you have torn into everything and have it half assembled. The second part of this, let me get this plastic bag out of the way. Excuse me, I know I'm probably making you dizzy here. Are all the, what I would call attachment pieces and hardware. So again, it will tell you exactly how many of each. The problem is y'all, yeah, they're not labeled. So you have to look at this and match it up. So it went all the way through and yes, indeed, I have everything. So that's how I start. Once I'm convinced I have everything, then I just simply go step by step. Now, so this doesn't get long and boring, I am going to use my tripod. I am going to put it on time-lapse. And from what I read in the reviews, this is the easy piece, it's the um, metal that isn't and there was some question about the quality of these zip ties so I may have to make a run to Big Town as I call it to get some heavy duty ones from Lowe's I wanted to at least see what they were like see what I thought of them before I went any further the wire is a pretty good heavy gauge wire this elastic thing is for the cover so and yes it's been raining y'all excuse my dirty table there's no point in cleaning it because 
uh, yeah, the trees are still uh, littering everything with debris. So I'm gonna get set up here, kind of get organized, and I will bring you back. Stay tuned. So just to clarify here, guys, this is a piece of cake. It's, you push in the buttons, slide it together, and then snap it in the holes. So um, this is not gonna take long to assemble the frame. What I did notice is the base has like holes so that you could drive like um, stakes down in there. And I get a lot of wind. The wind typically comes from the west. So I'm probably gonna need some anchors. But of course it's gonna be floppy until I get it all together. And by the way, Fancy Ray finally got out of the nesting box. There's one box that they like the best and they wait in line for it. Don't know why. They all have the same amount of lavender and mint in them. Um, so now Marigold is in there and poor little Velvet, or I keep wanting to call her Velvet, but her name is not Velvet. Violet. Um, she's just like, I don't know what y'all are doing in that box because I don't know how to do that. I feel bad for her. I hope she starts to mellow out. I wish there was something more I could do for her, but she does have her marigold to give her comfort and she puts her wing over her. It's very, very sweet. All right, so I'm going to get busy building the other side. Sorry. Um, and then we're going to start on the arch over. So Honestly, this isn't going to take real long to get the frame together. I'll have to decide at that point whether or not I need to run to town for better zip ties and also some ground anchors because if the whole thing's going to go like this while I'm trying to put the wire on, it's just going to make it that much harder. Stay tuned. Y'all, I just have to show you one of the great joys of being a chicken mama. So, <laughs> poor little Marigold, she had like a really hard time with this. She was in and out, in and out, in and out. So finally I went over on the deck for a while. I think I, she was curious about what I was doing and if you've seen in the background, I don't know what you can see on fast motion. They are so up in my business, <laughs> which I love. Um, Fancy Ray, the striped one, she loves me so much already. I mean, she's very attached to me, and that's why I think she needs a chicken friend. Um, still, uh, Violet has not laid any eggs, but I have a nice warm egg in my hand. I'm going to go put it up. I'm sure you saw I struggled a little bit with the door. Um, I see that the sides are coming in a little bit, so I'm probably going to have to kick it out. Um, for me, because the, there's no written directions. It's a little tougher to follow those pictures, but I think now I have in my head how it's gonna work, how the hinge is gonna work. So that's a good thing. But it is a little bit fussy on this part. The frame was a piece of cake. Remains to be seen what the wire's going to be. I think it's gonna be a challenge to do alone. They said don't do it alone. And there is, as you see, a lot of flexibility to this coop. And I think that it will make it harder. Oh, something in my eye, guys, sorry. 
to do it on my own, but I'm gonna give it a try. You know, the worst that can happen is I can't and I have to call somebody to help me, which um, right now I'm calling on Jesus. So say a prayer. I'm gonna put my egg up and wash my hands. We'll get back at it. And as you see, I've already shed my shoes. <laughs> I love my muck out shoes, the sloggers. They are so comfortable, but there's just something fun about going barefoot and being grounded with the earth. So I don't wear a lot of shoes in the summer. All right, stay tuned. So when all else fails, get the level. I think I can get the door frame straighter before I put the inner door, the actual door on. And I also would like to ask you all to drop me a comment below. Mosquitoes love me, love me. I know about citronella candles. It doesn't matter how much citronella oil I burn in torches, they still bite me. I know that if you eat a lot of sugar or if you eat sweets, mosquitoes are more attracted to you. But what natural cures do you all have to keep the mosquitoes away? Because if you see me scratching, I apologize. They just attack me. Chiggers never bite me, but mosquitoes do. So drop me a comment. All right, I'm gonna level up this door. I'll bring you back shortly. I have to say, building the frame was a piece of cake. The door was a little bit of a challenge, but I have the entire frame together. Sorry y'all, it's Monday. It's um, quarry hauling. So here's the door right here. Oh, I don't know if you can see. Um, the reason that I say it's not predator proof is there are gaps and one of the things I saw in the reviews was that birds can get in and out or birds can get in and they don't know how to get out so you may have to deal with that I'm not terribly worried about that <sighs> where I have a challenge and let me show y'all so I assembled this and I actually moved it so that when I open the door of the coop out towards us, the door of the run goes the other way, thinking, well, that's gonna create like a little tunnel for them to go through. But what I've realized is when this door is open, It's not that I'm worried that I can catch them. It's not that I'm worried they're gonna run away or anything like that. I just wanna keep them safe. And it, maybe it'll be a non-issue, especially if I have things for them like roosts and toys and things, small chickens, things for them to do in here. So I have this section here, I have two of them, of the white fence. So I thought, well, I'll put the white fence between the coop and the run on the back, which I'm fine with. I thought I'd put one here. Well, then I can't get in the coop, y'all. <laughs> so that is still um, TBD <laughs> to be determined. Uh, I do think I am gonna put the piece of white fence. It fits perfectly. And the funny thing is I bought the box of two for something totally different and never ended up even assembling the second piece because I wasn't crazy about what my vision was and what it actually looked like were two entirely different things. So, I think it is lunchtime. <laughs> you know, it took me a while. But I always try to give you a word of encouragement. I would have rather been whipped this morning than to cart on 106 pounds of frame, <laughs> plus the 20 pound box of, you know, accessories, screws, bolts, latches. Um, I just didn't feel like dealing with it because the coop was a lot. My back hurts. You know, I can give you all the excuses, but I, I just kind of put my mind to it and, and look guys, I've got this part done. I have not opened the wire. Um, I, I don't know that it's actually gonna need to go down into the ground be driven into the ground with stakes. It's pretty stable. Um, I'll see what it looks like once I get the wire on. I mean, I can wobble it, yes, but I think once you tie down, um, and it's zip ties and wire, 
think once you get everything in place, it's gonna firm itself up. So I'm gonna take a break. This may be a two-parter, <laughs> not sure. Um, Y'all yeah, say a prayer for Miss Violet that she'll start laying eggs. She's fine. She's very mellow, very shy, you know, like a shrinking violet. But I just want her to lay eggs. And I've been putting them in order as they've been laid. And Fancy Ray lays a darker brown egg than Marigold. So it's dark light, dark light, dark light. And I have been out here and I know when they're laying, I'm learning that. I want to know as much as I can about the girls. And definitely she's not laying. So um, I don't know. She might be upset, but she, I'll show you her. You guys, she's so sweet. Oh. That darn letter in the way. Can you all see her laying there? Well, Fancy Ray's gonna like take top. But she just, you know, she just mellow. And the um the red hen, Marigold, they are always like bound up together. And as soon as Fancy Ray sees me, she's like, Mom! <laughs> it's really, really cute to see their personalities. I had no idea chickens had such personalities. And I didn't think I would fall in love with them. But I can tell you, Frankie, he was at the door. I had the house opened up and he could see through the screen. And they were making a lot of noise and he could see under the table and chairs and he did not like it. So I'm not gonna bring him out for right now. I'm gonna let the girls get adjusted. And um, the shirt for today is a treat dealer. <laughs> Is not only does Frankie like treats, the girls like treats. So, yes, I'm definitely a treat dealer. All right, I'm going to take a break. I'll bring you back shortly. Stay tuned. All right, y'all. So, two-person job would make it much, much simpler. But what I did is I really am grateful for my sewing skills because I have am approaching this just as if I was cutting out fabric. So I have the bulk of the roll here. And unfortunately, the chicken wire catches on the buttons, but ultimately it will get wired and zip tied down. I know I have a big drip in the middle, but I'm going to anchor it here and then pull it tight back over. I do think this is doable. Um, this is probably going to be over two days, so I hope you all stay with me. I'm not going to show you every step of the way because it'll get boring, but I will show you the finished product. The other thing is chickens like to take dust baths, so I bought them a $6 baby pool at um, Dollar General. And then yesterday I went to Lowe's and got a 50 pound bag of play sand so I could put that in the corner for them to get their dust baths. I think they'll like it. Unfortunately, of course, they've eaten most of the grass. The um, coop has a lot of mud and poo after a week. You know, if you look at their little feet. Show us your feet, baby. Yeah. Did you have watermelon? Tell me. Cat got your tongue. There you go. I don't know what. What are you doing over there, Miss Violet? You're just hanging out. Oh, you wanted to see if the food was better on the other side. And this is my fancy Ray, and she loves her mum mum. Yes, you're a pretty girl. You're getting a sister, too. Well, y'all, to be continued. I have, of course, the frame and the door assembled. And I did manage to get the chicken wire on the first half. And then I have to do a second half, the whole end, which is gonna be two pieces. Not sure how that's gonna work. The, the door, oh, sorry, <laughs> backwards, the door. And I assume, I'm not sure how it's gonna go through this big piece, but one of the problems that I had, well, I had two problems. One is I need a pair of metal shears, so I will have to go to Big Town tomorrow <laughs> and get some. The second issue is the zip ties, and this was um, definitely in the reviews, the zip ties are crap. 
<laughs> they don't work at all. I mean, literally you can just pull them and they come apart. So every piece is um, wired in. Let's see if I can show you here. Yeah, see the wire? So a little bit hard on the hands, but uh, it's secure and I think it'll be fine for the girls. <laughs> they are um, very amused. They've, they've had company all day, so um, they've just been clucking around, you know. So more to come tomorrow. Good morning, day two, 7.30 a.m. Let's do this. Yo, if it seems like I'm on the struggle bus this morning, <laughs> I might be. I might be in the front seat. I might actually be driving the struggle bus. You know, the, the wire is quite heavy the chicken wire roll and it gets hooked on itself, but it is the width exactly of the, the frame between the poles. And so once you get it in place, what I found is you can zip tie and wire it down in the back, come up and over. Did go to Lowe's this morning, thankfully. I've already done that as well. And I was able to get some industrial zip ties, uh, some new cutting shears because mine are like, you can't cut butter with them hardly. And what else did they get? Yeah, those two things. And it should help me out a lot. I have a bowl over there of, of things, so. The zip ties are also outdoor grade, so I think that'll help me. So I'm gonna get working, not gonna bore you with all the details. I will bring you back later. Hopefully I will have a lot done because we're forecast starting tomorrow for four days of rain. Stay tuned. Okay, y'all. In about an hour and 15 minutes, I got the second piece up, so I'm definitely getting faster. You know, having the right tools really makes a difference. So let me show you something. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm not very well prepared. Here's the difference between the two zip ties. <laughs> so in full disclosure, I don't trust these. These are weather resistant, you know, so UV light will break down plastic, right? But these are great um, <clears throat> if you, I was twisting it, so operator error. But if you want to just tack something down, so now what I'm working on, and I'll make this brief, is just the end. So instead of going horizontally, you have to hold it vertically. So I'm trying to address a lot of the questions that people had, and I did get a lot of private emails as well about, you know, I wanna be able to do things like this, but I just can't. So here's two tips for you. You will have no fingernails, just saying. And a headband and chicken wire do not play well together. <laughs> I've about yanked my head off five times. And I always wear a headband, guys, because my hair's frizzy and weird and I like it out of my face. But what I can tell you is, you know, use props and extra sets of hands. I swear I wish I'd have bought those extra set of hands just for a funny, but anyway, <laughs> they were pricey. If you can, you know, like on trash day, y'all, this is what I do because they're behind the fence. If I see somebody that's put like a length of two by four out that I think I can use or a piece of pressure treated lumber, I will pick it up. I have no shame in my game because it's perfect for chores like this where, you know, you really need like five people and you could have, I could have had this together like this if I would have had like three extra people. <laughs> so, I'm using the ladder to prop it, and what I'm doing is tacking at the left, tacking at the top, checking the bottom, tacking at the top, checking at the bottom, and then I'll just repeat it on by. So that's just a, a little suggestion for you if you're having trouble doing things by yourself. The other thing I want to say, y'all, when you see a video of mine and you see me going in fast motion, and you're like, wow, it, it, <clears throat> it's not that way. It's a trick of the camera. So I do have to rest a lot. And if you have a chronic illness or disability or disease, um, don't beat yourself up over it because that negative mind space will just totally prevent you from being able to 
at least feel good about what you're doing, but it, it does impede progress for me. And y'all, I have to lay down. I'm just gonna tell you, I work really hard. I go lay down. I always say get the weight off my back because when I stand on my feet, as soon as my weight hits my feet, that's when my pain starts. And I'm not trying to be dramatic or ask for sympathy, but if one of the reasons I wanted to do this channel was not only to share some knowledge, but also I knew there were people out there who had limitations, um, if you want to call them disabilities, challenges might be a better word, discouragements, maybe that are widowed or, you know, like me, I have been single guys for 26 years. I've been doing this stuff on my own and it isn't easy. Now, granted, I had a son that helped me, but he's 37 and those days are gone. So, because he doesn't live here. So I do want to try to encourage you. And if you want to do something on a small scale, just like Thursday's video, you know, maybe you can't garden like on a full scale, but could you get a green stalk and in 19 inches, I mean, it is tall, but it's only 19 inches wide. You can grow 42 plants, guys, 42 things, which would really help feed you. And in these uncertain times, I think it would be a degree of security. Granted, it's not gonna feed you forever, but you know it will add to and certainly decrease your grocery bill. So I'm gonna get back to work and stop yapping. Well, it's lunchtime day two. Fancy Ray says it's lunchtime. I have both top pieces, the back, and this side done. So I've definitely speeded up today. What I have left here is the actual Oops. door. So this piece, wow. I'm sorry guys, it's really crooked. And then this piece right here. So another one of these in the door. So I'm, I'm getting there. What I'm finding is having the right materials is making all the difference in the world. Is it like a crazy amount of work? <laughs> it is, it would be a lot easier with two people, but I've managed and I'm super pleased and the girls are getting very excited and they keep asking me, are you done yet? I'm totally teasing. So I'm gonna go have lunch. I'll bring you back when I have it all of the screen done. Stay tuned. Well, y'all, 18 and a half hours over two days and I got it done. Who needs two people, right? <laughs> I hope I never see another zip tie again. So let me just give you a quick tour of what it will be like. I am still waiting. Sorry, there's an ant on my ring light. I'm still waiting on the spikes, if you will, to secure it. Now it's on the camera. Um, but let me just take you to it. So this does have a weather resistant cover that lashes down really securely, but the girls can still get some sun. As you see, it's about five o'clock in the evening. So there are places for them to take a sun bath, but there are places for them to be in the shade. Over here is my $6 <laughs> dollar general pool and 50 yes 50 pounds of sand so they can have a dust bath i need some kind of a roost so i kind of rigged this up i don't think this is going to work out well um i'm just going to have to think it through and see what else i can come up with but i do believe and y'all the fence is not in it's just leaning there once this door opens it's enough of a barrier i can get them straight away into the playhouse <laughs> no problem so this y'all was not like a simple project and i know i don't like the look of all of the zip ties but hey that's way she was built it um but what i can say is i used a lot of wire and i feel like it is safe when i'm here i will not say it's predator proof for nighttime i'm sure it could be dug underneath um, it's not nearly as secure as the chicken coop. So at least they will have a place to go play because they do get bored. And right now they're all three like at the chuck wagon here trying to eat at the same time. What are you doing girly girls? 
here. Has anybody got a cell phone? They're actually pretty quiet right now. Thank you for spending time with me over the last two days. I am kind of glad it's gonna rain. <laughs> That's a terrible thing to say. But uh, yeah, I am whipped, y'all, whipped. The 61-year-old gray-headed lady is not, or white-headed lady, is not ready for all this action, you know? But I am so grateful um, by the grace of God that I was able to get it done. I think tomorrow I will go ahead and let them in if I can get the fence gap sorted out here, which means I gotta dig a hole. And y'all, I'm just too tired to dig a hole tonight. <laughs> I was hoping my yard guys would come and I could be like, hey, I'm having a little trouble. <laughs> trouble, can you help me? But anyway, again, thank you so much. If you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button. Drop me a comment below. What do you think of my handiwork? What do you think of the girls' playhouse for um, some extra space, especially because there's going to be a fourth hen coming. So... Let's see, this will air, I think, on Saturday. Get out of the sun here. Trying not to get sunburned. And I have some exciting things coming up for you. I have a big Azure Hall, a large Azure Hall, um, along with the Grove Hall. And who knows what else we're gonna get into because we're getting into food preservation season. So probably some canning projects coming up. So as always, be healthy, be well, be blessed. Thank you so much again. Take care and I'll see you real soon.